And I, and I appreciate that the name of this organization is Africa Bless Israel. But I have to say, coming from the Israel side, it's a wonderful thing to be blessed. Today I wanted to say to our friend, the Jewish people, your life is always about defending yourself. And we know you have been defending yourself for a long time and you will still continue. But today we want to tell you, our friend Jewish who are Jew who are this place, we want you to sit down and relax. Africa wants to spoil you today. Because we are like everyone who saw this people over there. So this is uh, the Masan and Allah Sam. Israel does 
exceptional work in an area that's of his responsibility. And we start talking, and he's talking and, and interested in about finding government to government cooperation, which is an incredible blessing, right? The idea that Israel and South Africa, we already do many wonderful things together. Many wonderful things together, more than people know. And he wanted to talk about something else, government to government. And in the middle of the conversation, he starts worrying a little bit. That somebody's going to stop him. That somebody's going to say, you're right, Mr. Deputy Director General. Israel is the best in the world at whatever that is. It's not football. It's not, it's not football. Although we're playing well, we're playing well these days. That's Bufana Bufana, but it wasn't football. <laughs> but, um, and suddenly, he starts talking to me about Bible. South African government official wants to talk to me about how the Garden of Eden, in his view, flew the, that some of the rivers came to Africa and someone to the Euphrates. And, and I'm not sure that I really understood what he was saying. But I saw a connection. And that wherever you sit, wherever your position is, if you have faith in the Bible, whether it's the Christian Bible or the Jewish Bible, you know that we're connected. Yes. You know that we have thousands of years of history that in our past and thousands of years ahead of us that whether we pray on a Saturday or we pray on a Sunday, whether we pray in a synagogue or in a church, we're asking for the same blessings. We're looking for the same God. We want the same peace on earth. We celebrate the same emotions. And so it was interesting that this South African government official, once he moved on past the politics and the concerns, he remembered that he was a Christian and I'm a Jew, and that brings us together. And I don't know if in the end we're going to do this project together. I don't know, stay tuned, we'll talk about it next year at the, the next Africa Bless Israel event. But if it happens, this cooperation, it will be a blessing for Africa, for South Africa, and a blessing for Israel. And that's what we're all here to do. Whether it's in agriculture, or in water, or in technology, or in innovation, or in high tech. Israel's good at all of those different things. And Africa has so many, so many wonderful things. So many things that it's brought to the world. And one of them is certainly faith. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's really a great honor to be with you tonight, I think, with the Reverend, that, uh, that a difference between Christians and Jews, and that Jews give short, shorter speeches. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am going on. <laughs> but I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Thanking you for being friends of Israel. Thanking you for praying for the peace of the Holy Land. Hoping that by the way, that's just one lesson. See, I now I'm falling into this trap going on with these. Like, yeah, oh, that one, you have to do this? Yeah, yeah that works. <laughs> Who's been to Israel? That's a nice number. It's not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. Anybody who hasn't been yet, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I'm going to tell you now, tonight, at this very moment, at six minutes past seven, on the 25th of November, 2014, you've been invited to visit Israel. And so uh, I'm looking forward to just uh, so many friends from here in South Africa and across Africa. Come visit us. Come visit the holy sites. Come be close to us and learn how Israel can bless Africa as you, Africa, bless Israel. Thanks very much. Thank you, Excellencies. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like also to acknowledge and recognize the presence of all the Christian leaders, the fivefold ministry represented here tonight. And uh, I'm not biased to what Reverend Michel is appreciated because these, this is the men and the women who have learned so much from them. Uh, first, initially, as a young man looking at it from a distance and I am privileged to have been very, very close to them. 
And they're not the only one that have made an impact, not only in my life, but in the life of many people in South Africa. And one such person is Pastor Raul Kulelo, as a young man watching him from a distance, listening to him preach, and having the privilege of even driving his red Mercedes Benz. I don't know if he's still a And he has made such an impact on the life of many people in South Africa. And it gives me pleasure to invite him to come to the podium this evening. It's such a great honor and privilege to be standing here tonight. And I believe deep down in my heart it's not it's not it's not an accident. It's preordained by God. And I also sense in my spirit that this is prophetic. Uh, uh, what had been said right now, I was listening very carefully and I was listening with the spiritual ears. This is, this is really, really an ordained occasion by God. It's, it's, a, it's just the beginning of greater things. Uh, it's, it's so amazing that uh, the 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 honourable uh, uh, founder or visionaries of this wonderful uh, organisation, Bless uh, Africa, Bless Israel. Um, when when I was talking to his team, um, I learned that they they did uh, they, they did sort of a launch in Cape Town. And that's one of the things that really touched my heart. And, and suddenly when he said Cape Town, I said, this must be in God's calendar. Because I remember very well uh, Reverend Kenneth Mitchell that uh, uh, the, last, the last eight years when God spoke to me, uh, of course I'm an evangelist, I, I was, I, was, I was called as an evangelist, uh, traveling, to, uh, all over preaching, uh, it's, 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 it's in my blood, it's, 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 it's my life. So before I started preaching, I was in Cape Town. When I was sleeping, I saw a vision. I, I remember very well it was in a place called Fish Hook in Cape Town. Fish Hook. Uh, is it fish hook or fish hook? I don't know exactly, but some, something like that. It, it, it has got a fish some side in this and a hook somewhere. And, it's, and the place is like at the hook or just next to a mountain somewhere there. When I was, oh, I remember very well when I was, I was, I was praying, first time in Cape Town, I saw a vision. And in that vision, I saw fire. The fire was coming out of Cape Town. Fire. Uh, I, I will never forget that, that vision because I was not sleeping. I, I was not, I, it was not a dream, it was, it was a vision because I'm not old to dream. So I don't qualify to dream. It was a vision of fire that I cannot explain going from Cape Town. It was going and reaching the whole continent of Africa. But what I saw in that vision, out of the fire I saw things like arrows that were springing out of that fire and hitting the, the, all the continents of the world. It was out of, that, the, out of that impact, out of that fire, when I woke up and I prayed to God, I said, God, what am I going to do? What is this? I was preparing a message to preach in Mission's play. And then I heard the Lord say, my son, I am bringing revival upon this planet. And at this particular time, Cape Town is a point where I'm sending arrows to reach the whole world. Africa is a point where I'm reaching the whole world. And then it is from that moment I knew that there is a revival that is not only provincial or continental, but it's a global revival that's going to turn the world upside down. 
My prayer was from that time, and I began to run and preach. And after that, I had I had some people out all with same vision, same thing. And uh, in my life, I began to realize that there's a revival, and this revival, Africa has a lot, has got a lot of contribution to that revival. And today, when I heard about the launching of this prayer, the Lord reminded me. I said, Lord, thank you for that, for that vision. I know exactly that what is going to happen now, uh, Africa must take part and send the word of prayer to the world. I know that Africa has been part of it. anything to be blessed by it. anything to be blessed by it until we do what is written in Psalm 122. Bless, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The, the revival that we need in Africa and the whole world today, the key is praying for Israel. The key is being friends to Israel. It's not a coincidence that we are sitting here. And there is nothing that we can do to Israel. And God is not asking us a lot of things. The only thing that is asking from us, pray for Israel. That's why we are standing here. Abraham, the father and the founder of Hebrew nation, the Lord gave him a vision. That, Look up to the sky. What do you see? Count it if you can. And as he was trying to count, the Lord said, Your descendants shall be as numerous as the stars of heaven. And the sand by the seashore the Gentiles, the Christians. We are the sons of Abraham, so we are the stars of heaven, and the Israel is the sand on the seashore. We are the spiritual children of God, and for us to be blessed by God, finally we've got to bless Israel. We are here to, take, to pledge our support that we pray for Israel. We are praying, we are for you. We are on your side. We will make sure that we, every, every time when we close the, the service, when we say grace, we, we, we close by saying peace of Jerusalem. Amen. That's going to be the theme of the church, peace of Jerusalem. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. And I pray that God will begin to do great things as, the, as a Christian community. We will always take this message and this kind of friendship that we have and spread it all over the world, all over the countries and all over the Christian community and the people of this world must know that our blessing, our blessing is in Israel. If we want our blessing, we need to bless Israel. Thank you so much. Bless you. Good night. It is always very difficult when you are a program director and some of the speakers are your fathers in the spirit. And the temptation is to give them time, but <laughs> you're worried that if you limit them time wise after the event, they will pull you outside and have an intense fellowship with you. So, <laughs> I'm going to ask Reverend Albert to come and do a presentation, but before he does the presentation, he will just say a few words. Can we just welcome Reverend Abed and the Chief
There is a story about a man, I think, people already started to talk about him. He was 99 years with his beautiful wife, who was 89, but by One day, in the Torah, the one who read the Bible in the book of Genesis, there is a story that one day Abraham was standing at the gate of his tent. It was very hot that day. As he was standing at the gate, at the door of his uh, tent, he saw three men that he never <coughs> saw them before. What is interesting in this event, a man of 99 years running when he was very hot, running to go and welcome the stranger who were just passing by, going to a certain place. The Torah said that when he ran, he begged them, please, don't go. Let me bring water for you to wash your feet. Then I will arrange the food for you. And the Torah said that the three men, they accepted and they went to sit under the tree. Then Abraham went back in the tent, running. Can you see someone who's 99 year, 99 year old running? In noon, at noon, he ran straight to Sarah. Sarah, 99, 89 years, please cook some food, bake milk, bake a cake. And he ran to his cattle to get a very grass calf that he killed, and he cooked the food and brought it to <coughs> his visitors. After that, the visitors had finished to, work, to, to eat. The Torah said that this is where the prophecy about the birth of Isaac came on that day. Abraham, in his heart, was feeling a pain that his wife could not give birth. His wife was buried. This is what Africa is today. Africa, our beautiful continent, our great continent. You can see where, when we are here, we brought from Cameroon, from Uganda, from Congo, from Nigeria. Many different nations are represented in the world. The country we got the D5. The country we got the 49% of the equatorial forest. The country got all kind of mineral, but when you look to Africa today, it's like Sahara, barren, producing only Ebola, producing only malaria, producing only HIV AIDS, producing only corruption. Why we got a great continent with all the potential? It's a curse that we have in this continent. We've got everything. I'm coming from Congo. We've got the second biggest river in the world, in, in Africa, and the third in the world. Just the river Congo can produce hydraulic electricity for the entire continent of Africa. We don't need a nuclear plant in Africa. 
And go to Congo, you'll see. Go to other parts of Africa, you'll see what's happening there. I think we have to be like uh, Abraham. There are visitors around us. They are just passing by. Because the visitors that Abraham met, they were just passing by. The Jewish people in Africa, they are, they are just visitors because they are going to the Holy Land. They are going to make Aliyah one day. But in the meantime, they are among us. They are among us. But how we look to these people? How we look to the Jewish people? Do we have the, 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 the sight of Abraham? Or we see them like a, I don't know, like a BDS boycott, sanction? The blessing of Africa is in Genesis chapter 12. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who bless you. And I do not want that for my own country, Congo. Congo organized the big fighting will never happen until today. Between Mohammed Ali and George Foreman, it was in Congo. And he can say that the Hiroshima, the bomb that American the, 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 the drop in Japan, it came from Congo. But look how Congo is today. The birthplace of Ebola. My country. Birthplace of Ebola. The only country in Africa where 13 different nations they fought each other. Ten in the side of the government and three at the side of the leaders. And this war came with more than five million people who died. Why? Because I know, we know that our country, Congo, and many other African countries who follow Congo, they have been cursed. Because my former president made the biggest mistake that we Congolese, we regret today, and that South Africa, if you guys who are here, you don't pay attention, you are going to get like Congo is today. <laughs> president Mobutu went at the UN General Assembly on the 4th October 1973. He stood there, pushed by the Arab country, in, on, on, on the, on, on, in front, he was Colonel Kadhafi. He said to Mobutu, we're going to give you money for the petrol that we Arab African country we get. Mm. But the only thing we're asking you, cut tires with Israel. And Mobutu, without understanding the spiritual connection that is always with Israel, he went there, he stood in front of all the leaders of Africa, because he was the chairman of the AU, and he said, today, Israel, and the brother Egypt. I'm choosing a brother. As from now on today, I'm cutting ties between Israel and, Af and, 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 and Congo. He went back to Congo and he did what uh, I don't want to name them, who are pushing today to expel the ambassador. He came, he called the ambassador of Congo in 1973 and he told him, take your man, 24 hours, leave. You are going to carry only 20 kilos of cash. People don't know what's happening in my country. It's because of the curse for cutting tires with Israel. You guys, South African, I'm challenging you. Please, you need to stand. Don't accept that the ambassador to the And we pray that today, that if we don't shame Africa, best is that. Today I wanted to say to our friend, the Jewish people, your life is always about defending yourself. And we know you have been defending yourself for a long time and you will still continue. But today we want to tell you, our friend Jewish who are Jew, who are this place, we want you to sit down and relax. Africa wants to spoil you today. Because we are like Today. We are so happy to have you today, and I believe that when you say uh, this game, the rep of this game is here, they are not yet here, they are already there. Thank you very much. We want to give you a for the game for this game. Yes. Okay. But right now, we are going to bless Israel in our African style. Women, you know who this is. We want to.
from South African Christian communities, leaders from countries from all over Africa, standing here, singing, ululating, having a laugh, you know, really enjoying themselves. Guys, this it does not happen every day. This is, this is a new momentum. And things are changing. And we are understanding that there's so much that can be done. We understand that he has shared values. We have shared values in the Old Testament, in the five books of Moses, in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Israel. And that is our commonality. Something disturbed me the other day. Someone said to me, are you working with the Christian world because their enemy is your enemy? And I said, what? What? That's not what this is about. Fundamentally, this is about people that have common values, common interests. And that is what we are standing here doing. We're sharing that. We're appreciating that. And, we, and this relationship is based on truth. It's based on goodness. And that is why it is working. And that is why we are seeing such a groundswell of support. I need to stress one thing. And when I do get to address these crowds, I do, uh, groups, I beg your pardon. The one thing is certainly, as Jews, as Christians, we need to pray. We need to pray for what we believe in. We need to pray for what is right. But that is not our solitary mission in this world. We live in this world and we need to shape this world. And we need to, to do things in this world. And we need to take our aspirations of faith and belief. And we need to change things. In line with those aspirations and those prayers. Because I don't believe God wants us just to sit and pray. He wants us to do. And for me... For me, the message lies in what Pastor Albert was saying and what he has proven tonight. We need to take those prayers and convert them into actions. We need to turn to South Africa. We need to turn to Africa and say, Africa, Israel is your friend. Israel has so much to contribute, as do the Jews. And we need to tell people at all levels, we need to make that difference. Not just for the good of Israel, but more specifically for the good of Africa. At the end of the day, we all want similar things. We all want peace. And the rabbi said it so eloquently, he said it so perfectly. Every day we pray for peace. Yet people are distorting the truth and the reality of what goes on out there. They paint Israel as this, this nation that seeks war. And there could be nothing further from the truth. And we need to take that message to people and to create that clarity and to take away this haze of misunderstanding and to spread the truth. And we need your help as Jews and as people that are connected to Israel. I just want to finish off by saying again what a privilege it is tonight. And I look forward to the fruits that are going to come out of this event. And we will see how this will We will change South Africa for the better, we will change Africa for the better, and we will change Israel for the better. So thank you everyone and enjoy the week. All the way from the Uganda. His Excellency, the Ambassador of the State of Israel, uh, Chief Rabbi. His Excellency Pastor Kenneth Moshe, the President of Africa Christian Democratic Party, and your wife. Wonderful men and women of God, bishops and pastors, all dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad and I salute you all on this very important occasion. I must state this clearly that countries and people have been judged in history depending on the way they relate to the nation of Israel. I'm a student of history and mainly Middle East history. Uh, not only people, but nations and leaders Look at any leader 
who opposed Israel, see his beginning and his end. Let me tell you one. I'm coming from Uganda. Before I tell you, I tell you what happened to me, there was one great president who challenged Israel greatly. His name was called Idi Amin Dada. General Idi Amin Dada. He gave himself titles and he called himself Fried Marshal, the conqueror of the British Empire, life president of the Republic of Iran. When the terrorists hijacked a plane that was carrying the Jews, they tried to take it to Libya. And Gaddafi said, the Israelis can come here and take their people. They said, we're taking it. Where are we taking it? Because they wanted to keep the Jews without the access of the, the Jewish army or government to take them. Idi Amin told them, I am the field marshal, the conqueror of the British Empire. Bring the Jews here. Nobody will take them. He knew himself. He was so after, so fear. Everybody who thought about Idi Amin was so afraid of this man. We are told that he was doing things which are not even human. But I'm a citizen of Uganda. I was alive during then. I'll tell you that when he died, he was not even buried in Uganda. The citizens of Uganda and government rejected the dead body of Idi Amin. And he was buried in Saudi Arabia. Look at Hitler. Where was Hitler buried? Tell me about the family member of Hitler and where they live. People and governments and countries and leaders have been judged depending on the way they relate to the nation of Israel. <laughs> South Africa, today we have all these roads, we have everything within seconds. They can go away. Because when you hate Israel, you invite destruction. To church, I became a member, I was discipled, and I learned Christian theology. So I know Islam theology, I know Christian theology. Okay. I'm a pastor, I believe in the Bible. Amen. But before then, I hated the Jews. Why? There are a number of verses in the Quran that says that the Jews are sons of monkeys and apes and pigs. And there is one that touched my heart very strongly. It's in the book of chapter 5 of the Quran, Surah al -Mahida. The chapter of the table, verse 51. It says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O ye who believe, la tatahzu yahudiyya wa nasulaniyya awliya. Never make a Jew or a Christian to be a friend. <laughs> You see the book? So, one thing is happening. Terrorism began in the Middle East when bombs were being exploded in Jerusalem. And everybody thought that this is a war for Israelis. We left the war for Israelis. And somewhere, somehow, God began to protect the Jews. Today it's not very easy for a suicide bomber to blow himself in the city of Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. Yes. They try but they are failing. Yes. I'm telling you, you hear this demonstration is coming up and people say, don't go to Israel, you'll die. I'm telling you the truth. Israelis, they have got the expertise of protecting their city. For me, I'm safe in Tel Aviv than in Jordan. I have stayed there for three years due to the problems that was inflicted to me by Muslim extremists in my country. Because I converted from Islam, I preach and many people come to Jesus in my church. 
And I loved Jesus right because when I became a Christian, one thing happened. Whenever I continue to read the Bible, I find God of Israel, God of Israel, God of Israel. I say, I love this God. I love this new faith. And he's talking about Israel every time. What am I going to do? Then my mind was beginning to change. I said, oh, this God is identifying himself with the nation that I led. be a friend of the God of the Bible when I hate Israel. That's why I always tell these Christians who have this replacement theology. If you have your replacement theology and you think that God gave up with Israel, go get another book. The Bible belongs to the God of Israel. Go get another Savior. The Savior is a Jew. You cannot be a Christian who is morally upright and you don't love Israel. It's not possible. And I read the scriptures, God of Israel. I took it upon myself. Listen, when you read the news, they tell you news that is against Israel. This is propaganda. As an ex-Muslim, let me tell you, the Muslim extremists have succeeded to capture the minds of even those people who you may think that they are high, high of brains. To an extent that people believe in propaganda than in real information. They tell you about how Israel is an appetite state. They tell you a number of things. So in 2007, I took it upon myself to go to Israel. I went to Mutaba in Egypt. It was so touching to find that. I went to church, I became a member, I was discipled, and I learned Christian theology. So I know Islamic theology, I know Christian theology. Okay. I'm a pastor, I believe in the Bible. Amen. But before then, I hated the Jews. Why? There are a number of verses in the Quran that says that the Jews are sons of monkeys and apes and pigs. And there is one that touched my heart very strongly. It's in the book of chapter 5 of the Quran, Surah al Mahida, the chapter of the table, verse 51. It says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O ye who believe, لا تتحز يهودية ولا سلالية أو نيران. They will make a Jew or a Christian to be a friend. Is it a book? So one thing is happening. Terrorism began in the Middle East when bombs were being exploded in Jerusalem, and everybody thought that this is a war for Israelis. We left the war for Israelis. And somewhere, somehow, God began to protect the Jews. Yes. Today it's not very easy for a suicide bomber to blow himself in the city of Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. Yes. They try but they're failing. Yes. I'm telling you, you hear this demonstration is coming up. And people say, don't go to Israel, you'll die. I'm telling you the truth. Israelis, they have got the expertise of protecting their city. For me, I'm safe in Tel Aviv than in Jordan. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm coming from Israel. Yeah. I have stayed there for three years. Due to the problems that was reflected to me by Muslim extremists in my country. Because I converted from Islam, I preach and many people come to Jesus in my church. And I love the Jesus right because when I became a Christian, one thing happened. Whenever I continue to read the Bible, I find God of Israel, God of Israel, God of Israel. I say, I love this God. I love this new faith. And he's talking about Israel every time. What am I going to do? <laughs> then my mind was beginning to change. I said, oh, this God is identifying himself with the nation.
revelation that I read. I realized that I cannot be a God of the I cannot be a friend of the God of the Bible when I hate Israel. That's why I always tell these Christians who have this replacement theology. If you have your replacement theology and you think that God gave up on Israel, go get another book. The Bible belongs to the God of Israel. The Savior is a Jew. You cannot be a Christian who is morally upright and you don't love Israel. It's not possible. And I read the scriptures, God of Israel. I took it upon myself. Listen, when you read the news, they tell you news that is against Israel. This is propaganda. As an ex-Muslim, let me tell you, the Muslim extremists have succeeded to capture the minds of even those people who you may think that they are high, high of brains. To an extent that people believe in propaganda than in real information. They tell you about how Israel is an appetite state. They tell you a number of things. So in 2007, I took it upon myself to go to Israel. I went to Mutaba in Egypt. It was so touching to find that my, and my guide is a Jew. They are waiting for me. The camp that I hired is of a Jewish man in Jerusalem. Now, they told us, and everybody know that whenever a Jew see an Arab, he shoots the gun. Now, I'm going to see by myself how these Jews kill the Arabs. <coughs> Wait. And I wanted to see how, an, how, how a Jew jumps to skin an Arab. So I was curious, you know. I do my research. I went to Rutaba with my group. It's amazing that my driver was an Arab. I know Arabic. And my guide was a Jewish. And I said, what? Am I dreaming? Can a Jew and an Arab work together? I tested this out. <laughs> I did not expect that. The man drove us he did, uh, and took us in Israel and we went everywhere. But for me, that changed my heart. When I was in the hotel, I read the papers, I watched the TV. That's when I realized that there are members of Knesset, Israeli parliament, who are Arabs. That's when I understood that there is a commander of police, of a high officer, who is an Arab. That's when I knew that they have a, a, a charge of the high court. I said, what? No, this is a lie. I began to see a lot of things. That's when I went to my country when my mind is changed. And I knew this is a political propaganda, but the Israelis are good people. If you believe that, you can give God a hand because it's not good. So as I wind up, I'll take the Israel, after going to Israel, I came back to my country. And I began to teach my people about the land of Israel. And every man went to church, I became a member, I was discipled, and I learned Christian theology. So I know Islamic theology, I know Christian theology. Okay. I'm a pastor, I believe in the Bible. Amen. But before then, I hated the Jews. Why? There are a number of verses in the Quran that says that the Jews are sons of monkeys and apes and pigs. And there is one that touched my heart very strongly. It's in the book of chapter 5 of the Quran, Surah Al Ma'idah, the chapter of the table, verse 51. It says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O ye who believe, لا تتحز يهودية ولا سلالية أو ليان. Never make a Jew or a Christian to be your friend. You see the book. So one thing is happening. Terrorism began in the Middle East.
bombs were being exploded in Jerusalem. And everybody thought that this is a war for Israelis. We left the war for Israelis. And somewhere, somehow, God began to protect the Jews. Yes. Today it's not very easy for a suicide bomber to blow himself in the city of Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. Yes. They try but they're failing. Yes. I'm telling you, you hear this demonstration is coming up and people say, don't go to Israel, you'll die. I'm telling you the truth. Israelis, they have got the expertise of protecting their city. For me, I'm safe in Tel Aviv than in Jehovah. Yes. I have stayed there for three years due to the problems that was reflected to me by Muslim extremists in my country. Because I converted from Islam, I preach and many people come to Jesus in my church. And I love Israel because when I became a Christian, one thing happened. Whenever I continue to read the Bible, I find God of Israel, God of Israel, God of Israel. I say, I love this God. I love this new faith. And he's talking about Israel every time. What am I going to do? Then my mind was beginning to change. I said, oh, this God is identifying himself with the nation that I hate. a friend of the God of the Bible when I hate Israel. That's why I always tell these Christians who have this replacement theology. If you have your replacement theology and you think that God gave up on Israel, go get another book. The Bible belongs to the God of Israel. Go get another Savior. The Savior is a Jew. You cannot be a Christian who is morally upright and you don't love Israel. It's not possible. And I read the scriptures, God of Israel. I took it upon myself. Listen, when you read the news, they tell you news that is against Israel. This is propaganda. As an ex-Muslim, let me tell you, the Muslim extremists have succeeded to capture the minds of even those people who you may think that they are high, high of brains. To an extent that people believe in propaganda than in real information. They tell you about how Israel is an appetite state. They tell you a number of things. So in 2007, I took it upon myself to go to Israel. I went to Rutaba in Egypt. It was so touching to find that man and my guide is a Jew. They are waiting for me. The camp that I hired is of a Jewish man in Jerusalem. Now, they told us and everybody know that whenever a Jew see an Arab, he shoots the gun. Now, I'm going to see by myself how these Jews kill the Arabs. <coughs> Wait. And I wanted to see how, an, how, how a Jew jumps to skin an Arab. So I was curious, you know. I do my research. I went to Rotaba with my group. It's amazing that my driver was an Arab. I know Arabic. And my guide was a Jewish. And I said, what? Am I dreaming? Can a Jew and an Arab work together? I tested this out. <laughs> I did not expect that. The man drove us he did, uh, and took us in Israel and we went everywhere. But for me, that changed my heart. When I was in the hotel, I read the papers, I watched the TV. That's when I realized that they are members of Knesset, Israeli parliament, who are Arabs. That's when I understood that there is a commander of police, of a high officer, who is an Arab. 
That's when I knew that they have a, a, a judge of the high court. I said, what? No, this is a lie. I began to see a lot of things. That's when I went to my country when my mind is changed. And I knew this is a political propaganda, but the Israelis are good people. Okay. If you believe that, you can give God an answer because it's not So as I went up, after going to Israel, I came back to my country and I began to teach my people about the land of Israel. And every man rain or shine every Monday. We sit down, hear what is happening in Israel, current affairs, and pray for Israel and uh, promote the love of Israel. Because of three things. My conversion from Islam to Christianity. My preaching that we are causing many Muslims to come to the Lord. And my love for Israel. I was coming out of the church and the extremists attacked me with the acid. As I was going to enter my car, the man pretended as a member of my church and said, Pastor, can you help me? When I was turning, he poured a bucket of acid on my head and he shouted, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. The ones that I know that God is great, God is great, God is great. How can God be great when my life has been inflicted with acid? What type of a God are you talking about? The one who kills people when others are very happy. It's a gentleman, I have suffered with this for the last three years. Acid ate through my, my skin. And here I had a wound from here up to here. A deep one. You could see what is inside. My people took me to the hospital in Uganda. They say he's going to die. They took me to India when I was in India. That's where my Israeli friends, those I had met before in 2008, they heard what happened to me. It was a, this is a miracle for me to be standing here today. I see the I see the here, and I could not do this. All the skin you see here was. The, the old skin was removed and they put a new skin. What I had is not treatment. I had a transplant, a skin transplant. I, I, they put, uh, actually, it was implant and transplant. It was painful. I used to put a, a picture, I thought somebody's putting it. It was painful. As but this eye, you see, my right eye, and but it flat, as you can see here. The skin came from up and came down. The face was disfigured as a semi-sound. This ear, you see, my ear, this is an ear they, uh, for me to come here. I was coming from the hospital for medical checkup. They are trying to reconstruct this ear again because as they had burnt it flat, and this thing went inside. So to treat it, they had to all to reopen here and begin the construction. So this here is in, in this process of reconstruction inside the removing the skin, and then they are constructing it that are here again. But what is amazing is that the people who pour the acid on me, they are very happy, and they say they are doing it for the glory of their God. That's why I stand here to tell you. For you who pray for Israel, do two things. When many Muslims come into the community, the hatred of Israel rises up. Take it from me. If you love Israel, have something to do to stop the growth of Islam in your community. All this will be parties of eating something. Yeah. I will tell you, whenever there is a big group of Muslims in the community, that group, there is a hatred of Israel. Mm. Okay. Why? Because of this law. Like the 
If you come to my church, you will be amazed. I have people still with Muslims. Fatuma, Abdullah, Yunus, Ali, Usman. But when you tell them, do you love Israel? Oh, I love Israel better than my home. But Ali, why? Because they got converted. But those who are not converted, they hate Israel. So, if we are to love Israel so much, let us mind about the extremism in our community. When we fight extremism, we are making Israel to be on a solid foundation. As I wind up, the never thing is the problem of the people who love Israel, they have been loving Israel quietly. If this meeting is going to make a meaning among us, let's go out and love Israel publicly. I want to see the hands of the people who say, I support Israel. Excuse me, I support Israel. Put it down. Supporting Israel in words must stop. We put action. What are the actions when they boycott by? In this world, in Africa, there is poverty. There is no body who will boycott when you have your money. Let's make sure we buy something made in Israel. Let's make sure we buy things which are produced by Israelis. You are a Christian in places that shop will not go there. Go there, and when you will become rich, they will abandon their constituencies. The issue is let's love Israel publicly and let's over Israel and its inhabitations. And let them all become forward and turn back. That hate Zion. Strengthen the defenders of your holy land. Grant them salvation and crown them with victory. Let Jerusalem remain as Israel's undivided capital. And according to your word, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. As rich men, we will never hold our peace day or night. We will not keep silent. Yeah. We will give you no rest till you establish and make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yeah. Remember the whole house of Israel in all the land of this passion. Thank you that according to your way, you are returning them to Zion, to Jerusalem, your dwelling place. Unite the hearts of the Jewish people to love and refer you and to live their lives according to they understand. Trust our workers, thrust our workers into the Jewish harvest. Feed and increase your remnants of the Jewish believer. Unite the hearts of all the believers in Israel, Jews, Arab, and Gentile. Let the light of Yeshua shine forth from them and guide them to minister the truth of Yeshua to all the inhabitants of Israel. Grant them favor and success. Protect and unite all Messianic believers as well as all the Messianic congregation and institution in Israel. Your mercy be on Israel and the Jewish people as well as, as on Jewish communities and the Jewish institution in Israel and around the world. Amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. When God wants to do something, 
He does not need majority. We are all, God on our side, we are already majority. And that's from today onwards. We are not going to keep quiet. We are not going to support Israel quietly, secretly. We will open our mouth and we will decree and declare. Hallelujah! And I want to say to all people that all as from the 24th of December until the 1st January, we are having a conference called Standing in the Gap. We are inviting people to come there. We will be having people that come from all nine provinces in South Africa. We will have people who will be coming from uh, neighboring countries, okay, from Kenya and other countries. They will be coming to that conference. And uh, we are going to make double show that by the end of that conference, everybody will be singing one song. Bless. Israel must be blessed yeah. by Africa. Yeah. Hallelujah. The God of Israel is our God also. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. The first one, Reverend Albert Mangwa, he mentioned Mengaswade. He mentioned, among other things, how the DRC declined after they cut their relationship with Israel. Genesis 12.3 is not a joke. It is the truth. When God says, I will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse them. It's not a joke, it's a reality. The prayer of my heart is that South Africans will not learn the hard way. They have seen in the DRC what happened. Let me mention something that happened in Zambia. In the late 60s, we are told that Zambia's currency was stronger than the U.S. dollar. It was equal to British pound sterling. That time, they had a close, and every Zambian has an egg for breakfast every morning. He looked forward to all Zambians having bacon and egg every morning for breakfast because they were prosperous. And then when the war in 73 between Egypt and Israel started, the president of Egypt went to the African president and said, I know that Israel is your friend, but you are my brother. Choose between a brother and a friend. And many nations gave the Jewish people 48 hours to leave the country. After saying, after having said that we choose a brother over a friend, that was the decline. The last time I was in Zambia, about three years ago, the Zambian currency was equal to more than 3,000 3, kwachas, their currency, to one US dollar. When in the early 70s, their currency was stronger than the US dollar. Now, it is not just economics, it is the blessing of God. And so South Africans, I pray, will, should not learn the hard way. When I see people come from outside flying to South Africa, particularly from the African continent, many of them running away for different reasons, I say to my friends, you know, they are so fortunate, they are so blessed, because if they run away from Nigeria, Zambia, and all these other countries to come to better South Africa, at least there is still a country that is still holding on, that still has a democracy and economy that works. But if the trouble come to South Africa, where are we going to run to in the South? There is nothing but the sea, but the ocean. So ladies and gentlemen, South Africans have to be smart. South Africans have to be smart. South Africans must be smart. Now, the gentleman, the uh, Reverend Umar from Uganda, 
He has suffered. He has suffered more than three years. And thank God for Jewish technology and Jewish science. Why did he not tell you that it's when he arrived there he was told that he was almost dead. He was almost dying. But because of the brilliance and the ability that God gave them, they managed to rescue and save his life. Thank God he's alive to you. We need Israeli technology in South Africa. That's why when you hear BBSA, Boycott, Woolworth, Boycott, uh, Discam, and these others, you need to say BDS go to hell. We want the blessing to be South Africa. We want the blessing to be South Africa. We need to be better. We need to be better. Now, lastly, the people who hurt him, the people who wanted to kill him, unfortunately, many ignorant South African Christians are saying they are our friends and our brothers. Not knowing that the same people are saying, we are busy with the people of the Saturday. When we are done with them, we are coming for the people of the Sunday. And we are the people of the Sunday. The enemies of Israel, the enemies of the Jews, are the enemies of the Christians. If you did not know it, you know it tonight. If you did not know it, you know it tonight. Know that what is in their scriptures, what is in the Quran, he said it. To slaughter and annihilate Israel. Christians are after. Christians are next. I saw a poster in Australia when they were demonstrating there. One of the militants having a poster saying, Christians, who are next? Christians, you are next. So let us help South Africans wake up from sleep. Yes. Forgive me. Yes. Can I say this last thing? Yes. One witness with pastors and preachers. We have too many last things. Last things, last things. I know I said last week, I'm saying another last week. <laughs> That's a weakness we think, it's all right? Last week. I was, I was, uh, three weeks ago, I was in uh, Nail's group, meeting there with the pastors. One pastor asked a question, and he said, what can you do to help us because we are invaded? I said, in what do you mean invaded by who? He said, invaded by the soldiers. He said, invaded by the soldiers. Where are the soldiers coming from? For those who did not know, listen carefully. The majority of Somalis that are in the townships, running spaza shops, the majority of Pakistanis that are in the townships, running spaza shops, are trained members of Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab. So it is time to wake up.
men and all to who would raise from the midst of Africa to the God of Abraham. And this day that prophecy is fulfilled in your eyes. For the third time has come for Africa to arise. A change of position for the people. Come on. Shalom. Africa, bless Israel.